In 5G, the core must radically change. Cloud platforms will play a critical role in the development and evolution of communication services during the 5G era, during which the cloud will become a much more distributed architecture. To find out more about this, I'm talking today with Brian Davies, Cloud and Network Services, Core Network Portfolio Marketing at Nokia. So, Brian, uh, what does Nokia mean by end-to-end -end distributed cloud? Well, thanks for that question, Ray. Um, so let's start by looking at today's network architecture for 3G and 4G. So at the right there, you'll see that there's a centralized cloud or possibly a centralized data center uh, with connectivity, applications, analytics, AI, and even security. Um, IP and optical transport connects that to central offices and switching centers. And then there's backhaul to the access network. Now, the access network itself is also mostly centralized with macro cells for wireless and increasingly long fiber runs. Um, and as well, as the enterprise is actually treated the same as consumers. All of this is based on best effort um, services, best effort IP, with mobile services in SIMS, and maybe enterprises have VPN over MPLS, but most of the connectivity back to the core is still best effort. Now, what's changing is that 5G introduces new services and new capabilities in the network, specifically low latency capabilities, as well as massive connectivity. The problem with this network architecture is that it simply can't deliver those types of services. Uh, the reason is just a physical limitation as a result of physics. The speed of light limits what, what it actually can deliver. If you consider a one millisecond latency target, the implication of that is that both the user and the application have to both be rendered within 100 kilometers of each other. And that pushes the need for distributed clouds. So what we're doing to address this is to create a distributed cloud model that has, still has a centralized cloud and many distributed edge clouds. So this is the ship. This is the network of the future. There's many functions that move to the edge cloud, including analytics, data storage, security services, applications. Of course, we still use a centralized cloud, but it's for non-real-time and mission-critical applications. Macro cells in this model become much more intelligent with beamforming and with a millimeter wave underlay that doesn't conflict with the macro cells existing spectrum. Enterprises become separated from consumers because they'll have private networks private apps, and millimeter wave um, radio that's actually located on their premises. But at all times, this network needs to act cohesively. Um, it needs to be able to do network slicing, which is across all these zones, and it needs to have a high degree of efficiency for the operator to be able to manage it. Now, what is driving the change to distributed cloud, and how does it affect the network architecture? Well, there's three technology and 5G trends that are leading to new service opportunities. The first is cloud and new 5G radio. The second is virtualization and convergence of the IP access. And the third one is the modernization of the fixed network. What's happening is these are leading to new use cases that CSPs can uh, use, as well as a completely new 5G ecosystem by providing network capabilities that simply weren't there before. But to take full advantage of this, the network must be restructured into an edge cloud architecture. Now, edge clouds, you know, moving everything to the edge is not a challenge-free proposition. These edge clouds uh, are many small data centers close to subscribers uh, that, that include, they might, they might be at a, like a switching office or a telco shack at the base of a cell tower. They're much smaller than the typical CO data centers. And these, by definition, have limited space and power. And the existing infrastructure that's currently in the central offices are simply not designed for these smaller sites that number into the thousands. Now, it, uh, vendors may actually come up with solutions to this, but those solutions have the possibility of creating lock-in. In addition, another consideration is network slicing, where virtual subnetworks are created to meet specific SLAs. Network slicing marshals resources across all of the cloud segments. 
And what I've shown here is an example of a, a network that's been sliced. At the top, you can see there's a mobile broadband slice with large UPF capacity allocated to meet uh, high bandwidth applications. There's a, the middle slice is a critical machine to machine application slice. Um, this de delivers uh, ultra reliable low latency communications and a high degree of responsiveness. And the bottom slice shown here is a high volume, low traffic IoT slice that has throughput, but without mobility. Now, network slicing impacts all parts of the network, so end-to-end -end coordination is required. And in fact, this is where the end-to-end -end comes from in when we talk about the end-to-end -end distributed cloud. And what are some of the CSP business considerations around a transformation to a network like this? Well, the first most obvious uh, implication is that CSPs need to deploy the easy services first in order to generate a revenue stream that funds the rest of the, tra of, of the uh, transformation. So you start off with high continuous bandwidth uh, applications. And the reason for that is because 5G is radio is typically going first in their 5G deployments. So this supports high bandwidth uh, mobile devices, as well as some simpler IoT type deployments. This is typical of networks being deployed today in a non-standalone option 3x model. Um, and we have a lot of carriers that are, that are already doing this. The second tier of applications, the second tier is uh, more network intensive applications as edge clouds proliferate. These are full IoT applications that, or applications that require high bandwidth and low latency uh, along with mobility. Um, these will go second. And then finally, as um, edge clouds are actually uh, fully implemented and more advanced applications start to appear, we'll have the network all around us change how we interact with um, communications in our environment. Now, the, the key note here is that all of the early investment needs to be funded by new revenue generating applications in order to create a viable business plan. There's another uh, consideration that we need to think about is that 5G is actually expanding the complexity of networks into two dimensions. The first is a horizontal dimension. When we actually push applications and network functions out to the edge clouds, we're essentially expanding the network in a horizontal geographic sense. So this is a physical expansion. But we're also expanding the network vertically and virtually with network slicing. We're adding layers of virtual networks on top of this, uh, which is essentially a two-dimensional expansion of the network. Now, this is going to increase the complexity of network management quite dramatically. Uh, and as a result, we actually we have to do something to mitigate this. And that something is automation, uh, specifically automation that's uh, also enabled with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, otherwise, we'll end up with slow service deployment as well as unaffordable operational costs. So let's talk a little bit more about that automation. Network automation becomes key in the 5G into distributed cloud world. And specifically, if you look at the top left, lifecycle management uh, and automated lifecycle management makes the network more controllable and increases its agility. Additionally, the network slice creation needs to be automated as well as validation of those network slices. That leads to fast time to market. On the top right, you'll see that there's um, uh, automated AI enhanced security that mitigates threats and increases your customer trust in your network. Uh, lower left, you'll see that we reduce costs with automation as well, especially for network slice creation. And on the lower right, you'll see there's other impacts as well. So lowered alarm management costs, faster closure of trouble, trouble, tickets, trouble tickets, reduced customer impact of outages, improved network uptime. And the bottom line here really is that it's critical in, to invest in automation to manage the network assisted by artificial intelligence and, and machine learning. Now, another business consideration is the evolution of business relationships uh, that the CSP will see. So today, CSPs use cloud infrastructure, but it's not yet, uh, it, it doesn't yet include applications that depend on low latency or high burst bandwidth or massive connectivity, connectivity for IoT. If you look at enterprises, they have disconnected private clouds and they make use of web scale cloud providers today, but they don't really have much relationship with the CSP uh, for the most part. As 5G 
uh, gets deployed and also as mission critical apps get deployed, uh, the business relationships change. The CSPs will develop more intimate relationships with web scale providers and the enterprises will start co-locating apps at the CSP edge data centers. And indeed, they'll onboard workloads onto the CSP network as well as onto the web scale provider hosted on the CSP's network. The bottom line here is that enterprises are poised to become a far more important part of the CSP business. Now, can you give us an example of a new service that the 5G distributed cloud will enable for enterprise users? Ah, yes, I can actually. A really good example um, is the idea of a package delivery company that wants to use drones to deliver packages to customers. Now, one of the things about drones is that they're extremely weight sensitive. So you don't want to put a lot of computing hardware on a drone. Imagine if you had a drone that only had a radio on it and had servos to control the drone and the drone was remotely flown from a centralized location instead of having onboard uh, GPS and navigation circuitry. So um, in that kind of case, your drone is a moving object. It's going at high speed and it also has an extremely low latency and reliability component to the communication service. Or in other words, it requires ultra reliable, low latency communications. So the end to end distributed uh, cloud allows you to put the application that's controlling the drone right at the edge of the network. And in fact, as the drone moves from one location to another, then the application will also jump to a different distributed edge cloud so that the drone is always within a, uh, a short range of the of the edge cloud. And that's how you can actually get like sub one millisecond latency to remote control drone operations. Now, from the business perspective, for the package delivery company, this is going to represent a significant uh, cost advantage over one that has to do, uh, you know, uh, computing hardware on the drone itself. So, Brian, automation has been around in various forms for a number of years. Uh, what is actually new here? Yeah, you're, you're right, Ray. Actually, automation has been around for at least 40 years uh, and CSPs um, have been deploying it. So what's changed is the, um, the telco relationship with uh, cloud deployment models, specifically when you're talking about cloud native clouds. What this does is this breaks apart the network element uh, paradigm into microservices that have APIs and allows a very fine degree of control of automation. If you think about it, the automation that carriers have been doing over the past 40 years has largely been associated with a network element that's controlled by an EMS. And the EMS, you know, the automation is essentially a script or a macro that performs functions on the EMS. That leads to islands of automation. Uh, but with a, um, a disaggregated model where you've got network functions uh, in a containerized format with microservices that are stateless and dataless exposing APIs, that breaks apart that paradigm and allows you to gain automation that's much more holistic in nature. So, Brian, are there any key takeaways you want to leave with us today? Um, yes, actually, all of this really is just a natural conclusion of what has to happen to take full advantage of 5G. 5G service requirements fall out of the new 5G capabilities, and this pushes network functions to the edge. As a result of that, we naturally end up with an end-to-end -end distributed cloud. So Nokia, of course, covers all of these bases with technology for every aspect of the distributed cloud. And we have customers today that are building these capabilities using fully cloud native network deployment models. Well, that, that's a great way to end our discussion, Brian. Thanks very much for sharing your insights with us today. All right. Thanks, Ray. Thank you very much.